Tesla software version 36.2.1 has finally arrived. I'm Frugal Tesla Guy and I'm going to show you what you can expect with this update. As it is with most software updates, it always feels like an eternity before you get it once its release has been announced. But I finally got it installed, so let's get started with what version 36.2.1 has to offer in a Tesla Model 3. Many might argue that one pedal driving is nothing new. In fact, the latest generation of Nissan Leaf and Chevy Bolt have been equipped with it for a while, so big deal, right? Sure, you could complain Tesla is a little late to the party, but it's here now, so why dwell on the past? I noticed it right off the bat when I was backing down my driveway on my way to work. I had to keep pressing the accelerator to get down the hill. Normally, I just let go and it just rolls on down and then I have to eventually put my foot on the brake. Well, this here is a prime example of how much more regenerative energy you'll get with one pedal driving. As much as I hate to admit it, when I first got the car, I drove in creep mode for several months before turning it off. It took some getting used to, but now I can't imagine driving in creep mode ever again. Now, if you haven't been driving in creep mode, then most likely once you install the update, one pedal driving will already be set for you. If not, just go into controls by tapping the car icon, driving, stopping mode, and tap hold. Side note, this can only be done while in park. Much like turning creep mode off, driving in hold mode, aka one pedal driving, takes some getting used to. But the more you use it, the better you'll get with timing on when to release and press down the accelerator. It's all a matter of touch, and before you know it, you'll feel less of a tendency to press the brake. Schedule departure is also a feature that has already been out for a while, or at least different variations of it. Now, this setting will not only allow you to set a timer for charging during off-peak utility rates, but also automatically starts climate control, so you have a comfortable temperature inside the car when you get in to leave. To do this, go into charging by pressing the lightning bolt, tap Schedule, and then select Depart At, and set the time you plan on leaving. Then select whether this will be all week or just weekdays. If you select all week, then you have the option to precondition the car on weekdays only, and you can do that by selecting the checkbox. You can also set the time for charging to start. Be sure to check with your local utility company when off-peak hours begin. Unfortunately, my utility company doesn't have off-peak rates, but I love the idea of having a preconditioned car when I get in to leave. It's also important to note that the car will not precondition if the battery is below 20%. Your car's power has been increased by approximately 5%, improving acceleration and performance. Automatic navigation is a pretty cool new feature that will be particularly useful for those that commute on the highway and use autopilot every day to and from work. Now, it not only learns your daily routine, for example, going to and from work, but it also taps into your calendar by creating routes based on upcoming calendar events. To adjust this feature, tap the car icon, navigation, and then toggle on automatic navigation. It's as simple as that. Now, you also need to make sure that you have your home and work address in the navigation settings so the car knows where to navigate to. As usual, this update also has minor improvements and bug fixes. Your guess is as good as mine as to what those are. However, I did notice one thing in the short time that I've had this version. There are certain settings that upon changing them will activate a spinning wheel by the user profile name. Now this may have been here in previous versions and I just didn't notice, but this will help answer the common question of what settings are saved in individual driver profiles. 
This may be a project for a quick future video, going through all of the settings in the car, taking note which ones activate the spinning wheel. Could be interesting. There has been a lot of talk about this version and construction cones being seen on the screen. However, from what I understand, that only works for cars that have hardware version 3.0 and higher. Of course, basically just 3.0. Anything below that, such as myself with version hardware version 2.5, you're not going to see the cones on the screen. Quite honestly, this doesn't concern me. It doesn't upset me in any way. I mean, I know when I'm driving in a construction zone, so it's not a big deal. But this may be an indication that soon we may start seeing more people getting the hardware version 3.0, especially for those who opted in for the full self-driving package. That's Tesla software version 36.2.1 in a nutshell for Tesla Model 3 long range rear wheel drive. I'd love to hear about your experiences and if there is anything new you have discovered with this version of software. Be sure to write those in the comments section below. As usual, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you haven't done so already, you can help support this channel by clicking the subscribe button. Well, thank you all so much for watching and until my next video, stay positively charged.